I'm a professional. Howdy folks, Luke Simons with you. Back to the basics 101, just out here on a beautiful June 8th day, and it is absolutely gorgeous. Just checking some cows and a few butcher steers I have here. Cherokee wants to get in on the pitcher, and Shorty, of course, is always in on the pitcher. And <clears throat> look at here, I'm wearing a hooded sweatshirt. Pretty fancy, huh? Got it from my uh, one of my kids for uh, I think my 40th birthday. I didn't even know I had a hooded sweatshirt to be very honest. My wife packed it for a men's retreat I went to this weekend and just came home and thought I'd check some cows. And <clears throat> she didn't even recognize me because I was wearing it. But check these little calves out, aren't they just gorgeous? Look at them. Gorgeous. Living the dream. Hear that? Those are birds. And that's it. That's a Western Meadow Lark. Had a new calf today, but I wanted to show you something if I can get this on film. I've had this for a long time and I don't know exactly what it is, but it's some kind of grass that grows in a circle, not just like a dot but a circle with regular grass growing inside of it. I'm gonna go stand on my four-wheeler and show this to you. Check this out. Fall off this thing. Here we go. You seen this? It's a circle. This pasture is full of buffalo walls. There's one up there from back in the day. But look at this, okay? So here's Cherokee, and here's that circle of grass. they're peri periodically placed. Isn't that just the craziest thing you ever did see? Noticed it for years. It's beautiful. Got a couple milk cows out there. This is my home pasture. If you don't have a great Pyrenees and if you have plenty of land, let them roam. I'm telling you what, that is the best dog you'll ever have. So this is what it starts out like, right here. Just kind of a round spot. And then look at this grass. Seeing it? it? Just goes in a big circle. You can still see it right there. And the patterns are always a little different. And you can see whatever kind of grass it is, and cows like to chew it down. Cause that's been munched on. Oh, Cherokee, Cherokee. Come buses! It's gonna be loud. Come buses! Come on, you welfareians! Check the old Scotty out. That cow came up dry. She's gonna go in the dry lot. She's gonna make some really good steaks. That cow there was my. That's a daughter out of one of my fattest cows on the ranch. She went blind in that one eye. She can. She has a little bit of movement. Look at that. Tame as the day is long. Short little cow. But uh, anyways, her mother was on the ranch until she was 17. This is Rose. Rose is half Jersey, half Holstein favorite cow right here. See how pretty she is? A little red cow. That's 104. She's getting, I think she's my oldest cow here at this place. She's also probably my shortest cow. I think she's a one or two frame. We'll see here's some more grass. It's about the same. Isn't she gorgeous? She's half Highlander, that little red cow. Her mother was number 50. She's been long dead. Her mother has been, but she's born in 2010. Fourth calf born that year. I don't know how many calves she's got in the herd. 
In fact, every one of my bull calves are kept out of her. All of them, I think, all but one. This here is a 2015 model cow. Shorties, Shorty Scotties. This is actually my favorite cow, the one I just showed you, the red cow. This is one of her daughters. She just calved. Her udder is pretty big. Pretty wild, all but two feet away from me. You guys, this is boring for you, but I could be here all day long. Number 50 is a granddaughter out of my red cow. Not that little feller, but that one right there. Ooh, you gonna get pokey? You gonna poke me? Just a little bunch of them. That's a fire brand, if you can see it. 5018. So the top years, the year she was born, 2015 model cow. And 018, that was her mother. That was one of my best cows on the ranch. This one here is a bull I saved, and he's turning out just fine. He's uh he'll be about 1600 pounds when he's done. This 2008 model cow, number 82, that's her calf standing right in front of her. Other than her color, she's one of the best cows on the ranch. Now that cow saved the whole herd one time, and I had the footage and I lost it. I don't know if I got a new phone or what, but that cow, we had a snowstorm out in the middle of the reservation in the Badlands, and I dug a trail, me and three other friends, we dug a trail, and I had, I don't know, 50, 60 cows come following me on foot with snowshoes, and that cow's nose was at my back. She knew perfectly well they would all die if she didn't come home. And she led every one of them cows, she's kind of a herd boss, home. Old cow, she passed away on me. Old 83 was a Coriante cross longhorn and she passed away this winter she died and she was thin she had some leg issues i did a video on her one time oh years back now where she had some foot rot and i darted her and this is what's left of her i don't know if you can see her or not pretty good size she kind of smells like uh well, a dead cow, I guess. And I have some old tarnished fuel. All those tree branches. And there's uh, two dead cows in there. One's quite old. And the other one is uh, from last year. And I, there was a calf that fell backwards. Hopefully I'll never have to show you that, but I was at session this year, so I couldn't show you, but 
Sometimes a cow will flip upside down in a little hole, and that'll kill them. That will kill them. This is some old tarnished gas I got out of a uh, pickup. I was made into a trailer. I'm not quite done with it yet. I'm a professional. So there are thousands, maybe tens of thousands of flies in there just a buzzing like crazy. So this is going to be a holocaust for flies. Hopefully I don't get myself burnt up here. Remember, I am a professional. Don't try this at home. pieces of wood all that fun stuff turns into great really good charcoal She's burning really hot. All the cows are pretty much coming over now to see what's going on. I put uh, all the branches I can find. Boy, thousands of flies are coming out of that. And I just let that sit in here. That, those branches are probably, well, I did a YouTube video on that. Probably five, six years old. And that is thousands of habitat for rodents, etc. And I'll start a new pile. Scoop all this up with my loader tractor, and it's going to all go right into my garden, my wife's garden. Get this little dead calf off here, what's left of it. Of course, Cherokee takes care of pretty much all of it. Not much left of it. Rip cage. Woo, she's hot. Thousands and thousands of flies. Well, let me show you what my little four-wheeler trailer is. I've got a little toolbox mounted on the front. That's pretty slick. Used to everything used to kind of just bounce off the front. And oops, I missed some wood over here. Got my fence, some fencing tools, just miscellaneous tools some scoop shovels away like I said this is that tarnished gas bad gas I got my axe in here one of my axes got my torch tamping bar shovel of course you got to have a cow head in here at all times and I've got a tire I use these tires to just cut them off with a sawzall or a knife and I use that for erosion control fill it up with old sandstone and uh, really works good for that <clears throat> Some miscellaneous garbage wood things of that nature 
handy little fencing trailer, let me tell you. Just something I found along the way. That's just a pickup box trailer, uh, or a pickup box toolbox I put on there, just a little side one. Works pretty slick. Now if you go back and look at the video that I made for Habitat, you will see that that was really tall. Once upon a time, that was as tall as the pickup actually. What happens is, is there's no trees in this pasture. We're in North Dakota. And the cows and horses will walk around with a stick in their mouth, just like a man will with a cigar or something like that. And they kind of chew on it for fun and mineral, etc. So not only did that act as habitat, but it brought sticks all throughout this pasture. By the time that they get it out, they're pretty small. Now cows can choke on them, but it's pretty rare. Every once in a while, they'll chew on bones. That's one of the main reasons that you want to get rid of bones. Now back in the day, the Native Americans would burn off the prairie quite often. They did it for a number of reasons, which I'd be happy to explain to you sometime if you're interested in that. So there wasn't a lot of bones laying around because they were burned. I'm mimicking exactly what they did. And those charred bones turn into excellent green grass. Now you can see old 82. She's nothing left of her really, just skin and bones. I could pick that up with one hand, that carcass. In fact, I kind of did. But you can see her stomach was full of feed. See that? It's all full of manure. Just dried manure, that's all it is. And it just spilled right out of her. Cherokee ate her stomach and left all the, the grasses. Wildlife does eat a lot of that grass that's in the stomach. That's how they get their vegetables. Something I didn't mention to you and I should have showed you more in detail is that cow's carcass was completely gone. Why? We don't have a lot of coyotes because our dog, our Great Pyrenees, Cherokee, keeps them at bay. But that is what she ate all winter long. And that dead calf. <clears throat> she devoured them. There wasn't much left except bones and a little bit of hide. That's about it. And there was nothing left. It's in sync with nature, folks. It's in sync with nature.